So I visited Yad Vashem in 2013 in Israel, the Holocaust Museum, and in two weeks later I visited the U.S. Holocaust Museum uh, as part of the National Executive Institute. I participated in the law enforcement and society training program. I saw and heard the museum speak to what the police did and did not do during Nazi Germany's reign, what the police actually did not stand up for, which was human rights, civil rights. I saw that the police had a role in society that was abused, and I wanted to make sure that we understood that the police have not always been on the right side of protecting rights. And it's important that we talk about the history of the police so that we can prevent past mistakes and failures and give people better understanding of how easy it is to do the wrong thing if propaganda, leadership, values fail. Instead, come here to learn not only what the police did back in the day, but how now as a member of our communities and society, we can do to protect all of those rights. And um, the devastation that the Holocaust had on entire populations, villages, towns, um, people were wiped out um, because people stood down and didn't do the right thing. And giving our officers and our personnel that work in the division this opportunity to be here and experience it in a group of people that have a shared purpose and shared mission, I think really brings home our responsibilities and our role. We are the ones that have the authority to protect our communities and we need to understand how that can be usurped, if you will, by people that have bad intentions or power hungry. We need to continue to, to stay together as a, as a group so that we do our very best to protect the citizens that we serve. We do bring both our sworn and civilian personnel to this because we all share the mission. Um, this is not a, um, only a police issue. Um, we need all of our representatives who work in the Division of Police to represent the division well and to um, understand that they're part of the team. Um, we don't operate in a vacuum. We operate as members of our communities as well. I don't want anyone to feel separated within our division based on their rank. So we've got all ranks here. We've got all years of service. We've got sworn and civilian and skills and abilities and all of that. Um, and I think it's important that we all view ourselves as teammates. The program really is about understanding how police in Nazi Germany failed in their role as protectors of all members of society and using these lessons of the past to kind of understand the role that police have in our society today. That every interaction they have with citizens is really a hallmark of whether democracy is working or not. And it's really about understanding that the people back then who were doing these monstrous, horrible things aren't different human beings than we are today. And that's really, I think, at the core of it, is understanding that people back then did have choices, they do have free will, and they make decisions based on human being reasons. And understanding that we're all human beings today and we are all susceptible to those same reasons lends us to think about, well, how do we ensure that our system stays as strong as it does? What are the safeguards in place and are they enough? And for police to really reflect on their role and think about how the job that they do 
is so important to maintaining the fabric of our society. Back then we saw police, what they were doing didn't change, how and why they did it changed. So for police today, thinking about when you just say, I'm just doing my job, what does that mean? And how and why do you do your job? What's the purpose of your job? Is it just to enforce the law or is it to be the defender of our rights and freedoms in this country? We want law enforcement to understand its relationship to the people they serve and its role as protectors of the Constitution. And looking at the Holocaust kind of frames that question very clearly. It kind of clarifies all of the things that law enforcement believes in. Caring, trust, helping people, serving the values of a country. This was our fifth trip to the, the museum with a busload of, of personnel from CPD. Um, we're able to get 56 people on the bus. The Columbus Police Foundation provides a grant of money to um, the division to support the meals and the uh, travel arrangements that we have to make for these trips. So that's where the money directly comes from, but they only are able to do that because of the generosity of donors. And we've got some corporate donors, but we also have some individuals who have um, been an integral part of getting this trip funded every single year. The first year, the Jewish Foundation and the Wolf family donated money. And as a result of that, we went back to the Jewish Foundation for one of their donor get-togethers. And I was fortunate enough to be introduced to um, the Garlic Oaks. Their generosity, as well as the generosity of the Wexner Foundation and a gift from Larry James, allowed the Columbus Police Foundation to secure funding for this educational trip for our personnel. Besides support from the private sector, the Columbus Police Foundation has partnered with the corporate world to secure funding for this trip. AEP has been one of our donors, contributing to multiple trips, and we appreciate the relationship they have with the Columbus Police Foundation. We've been very fortunate to um, benefit from that generosity in the sense that we get to go, but also benefit in the sense that we now have a much deeper appreciation for the Jewish experience during the Holocaust and um, how we can better deal with a diverse community. I didn't know what this trip was going to be like, and I didn't think I would learn as much as I've learned or have experienced these kinds of emotions, because I've been to DC before and I thought, ah, oh, it's just going to be another, you know, learning experience about history, and, and instead I feel more of an emotional con connection now because of everything I learned and listening to all the stories about law enforcement. On the trip, we learned a great deal about the role of Nazi police during World War II. We were also reminded of our responsibilities to protect constitutional rights in our own country. On the third day of our trip, we were able to tour the National Museum of African American History and Culture, which covers a wide range of historical information, from the first days of the slave trade, to the Civil Rights Movement, and to modern contributions made by African Americans. We learned about the similarities between the bias laws which were in effect in Nazi Germany and the Jim Crow laws which had been enacted here in the U.S. We learned about segregation and the way individuals were treated differently based solely on the color of their skin. When we see the inequality which was part of our own recent U.S. history, it reminds us that we cannot allow it to happen again. The, the public must always see us as unbiased. And so when you take these young officers there and they actually see actual footage of how law enforcement treated American citizens who were just fighting for their rights, 
I, I think that it strikes home with them and it lets them know that this was a real part of our history, a dark part of our history, but a real part of our history and we must guard against it. One of my favorite um, displays in the museum is a civil rights counter where, where you're sitting at like the, like a Woolworths counter and they're showing all the videos of all the different civil rights uh, um, marches and, and, and just the treatment of them. And then you see an officer with a dog come up and that dog attacks, you know, one of the protesters for actually fighting for their constitutional rights. So they're using the law to keep these people from peacefully protesting for their constitutional rights. So I always spend a lot of time at that, or I have spent a lot of time just watching the videos. On behalf of the men and women of the Columbus Division of Police, I want to thank all of our donors. The Garla Coves and so many others have been very generous in their support. The Jewish Foundation, the Wolf Family, the Wexner Foundation, AEP, and many others have been um, very helpful in supporting this effort to get an education and an experience for our personnel so that we can more professionally and respectfully serve our community.